Welcome, everyone. Um, uh, as most of you are aware, my name is Cynthia Holt. I'm the Executive Director for the Council of Atlantic Academic Libraries, and welcome to this webinar from uh, uh, hosted by the uh, Call OER Committee. But uh, our presenter today will be Lynn McGregor, who is the uh, the Copyright Officer and uh, an open education librarian at the Nova Scotia Community College, and she's going to be uh, giving us an introduction to H5P and Pressbooks. Uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that CALL CBPA represents member uh, libraries across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of First Peoples. Um, in Newfoundland and Labrador, our libraries sit on the homelands of the Inuit, of Nunutsiavut, and Nunutkutavut, and the Innu of Natasanin, the Beothic, and the Mi'kmaq peoples. In Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. And in New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Woolly Stoic, uh, the Mi'kmaq, and the Passamaquoddy peoples. We at CALL CBPA wish to express our sincerest gratitude for the first peoples who share their ancestral hom homelands with us all. Um, so uh, just a few housekeeping things. If possible, if you can turn off your um, mic and your camera during this session, uh, just to optimize uh, everybody's experience, especially for those in low bandwidth areas. Um, I'll leave it up to Lynn. She'll let you know uh, about uh, asking questions throughout uh, during the session or after. Um, she'll let you know that. And uh, like I said, uh, this will be uploaded, the recording to the website as well as the link to the book that Lynn is going to share with us. Um, so without further ado, I will pass this on to Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Cynthia. So um, some of you have already found the um, one question I put into the chat, uh, just asking you what your current um, understanding or knowledge of H5P is, you know, whether it's brand new to you, whether you've um, created some, whether you've imported some. Um, so a little bit helpful for me in terms of understanding, um, uh, I guess, what I need to cover today. And um, I also wanted to um, preface this session um, with a, a bit of a caveat. Uh, I am not uh, an H5P um, ex expert. Um, and this uh, session has um, a focus in terms of, Cynthia, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the call objectives is a uh, train the trainer um, model, uh, share um, what we know to contribute to um, a community of knowledge. Um, and it's in the spirit of um, openly licensed content, um, OER, um, and um, reusing, revising content, um, and, and sharing what we know with each other. So I am a little bit further along, um, perhaps than some of you, uh, in your exploration and use of H5P. Um, it looks like in terms of um, the seven responses that are um, there, which I think you can see because I'm sharing my screen, um, three, Three respondents, uh, no exposure, one person's read about it, one person's created one or more, and two of you have imported and used. So there's a wide um, variety here, a range of um, where we are. So in my role um, at uh, NSCC, I am uh, the Press Books Network Manager. And um, I, um, while I'm the copyright officer, I've um, the my role also uh, is supporting um, the understanding of uh, open licenses, what open educational resources are, where to find them, how to use them, uh, and in that. Um, role, uh, I started discovering uh, H5P being infused uh, into open textbooks. I attended an amazing um, session. Uh, I can't remember the name of the conference. It was put on by um, BC uh, campus. Uh, and the whole focus was about, um, there was a huge focus on infusing interactivity 
into open textbooks. So there was a, a large focus on um, H5P. So because we're talking today about using H5P and using it um, in press books, I thought uh, to heck with a slide deck, I should um, be sharing this content in uh, a press books hosted book. So this is the uh, book that I've started to create on using H5P. Uh, I don't have a cover yet, but if we scroll down, um, you, I can uh, put the URL in the uh, chat. If I can find where my, that screen has gone, or maybe I can let somebody else put that in the chat for me because I will get distracted. Um, and I can't find where they're, oh, here it's disappeared down here. So to start off with, uh, so this book will be um, ongoing after the session today. I plan to keep um, adding to it um, and expanding on it. Uh, and you will have, um, uh, it has uh, an open status in Pressbooks. So uh, you can come back um, after today and uh, have access to any of this content. Um, so I guess, Let's get started with um, just a short overview of what H5P is. Um, it stands for HTML5 package. I had to look that up. I've been using H5P for a couple of years and uh, before I actually um, started to wonder like, why is it called H5P? Uh, the beauty of H5P is it allows us um, to create interactive content without having any um, understanding of coding languages. You don't have to um, know HTML or CSS or the more advanced kinds of um, coding that are used um, in H5P. Uh, it is um, easy to use. Uh, it is mobile friendly, which is wonderful because of a lot of students today aren't just uh, using content on using a computer, they're using their phones, they're using tablets. So it's really important that the content that we're creating um, um, be mobile friendly. It has, I think, the documentation is incredibly uh, strong. Uh, and the documentation always includes examples. So depending on the kind of learner you are, you can um, read or view uh, examples of the different content types. And there are quite a few, as you can see, when I actually counted them up, we're now up to over 50 different content types to choose from. We can, um, the content, uh, the H5P content uh, can be imported and exported. And I guess by that, what I mean is we can find H5P that's already created and import it into our books that we're working on. And um, others can take um, um, the content um, and export it, and we can export the content that we create. We can, um, as with um, any openly licensed content, we can um, be creators ourselves and create from scratch, or we can revise and customize. And I'm a huge advocate for not recreating the wheel. I always start by going out and looking to see what I can find in the area um, that I'm either supporting instructors and in looking for content or creating content for myself to see if there's something that I can use as is, or I can take and revise it and customize it, um, make it, contextualize it to make it uh, fit uh, better with the NSCC context uh, and the content that either the instructors or myself are creating. A lot of um, instructors um, at NSCC were actually using H5P before we got our own Pressbooks instance. Um, but th those early adopters ran into uh, an issue of um, the, so the actual creation uh, tool is openly licensed. You can create um, H5P content um, on the H5P website. 
but you need a place to store it. You need a place to um, uh, save that H5P. And what Pressbooks gives us is a place to um, save and store the H5P we create. And it also um, allows us to create H5P right within Pressbooks, which is pretty um, exciting. And then down below here, I just have um, links right out to the H5P website, to their documentation, uh, because, uh, but I need to check those, double check those links, which I will do um, later today, uh, because uh, if they update their documentation, uh, I won't, we won't necessarily know. Uh, it won't be reflected um, in this resource tool. So in this instance, I'm linking out to that content. I guess I should back up a minute and say, if anyone has um, a question while we are moving through this, because um, this is a more of a, I'm not an expert, I'm sharing what I know session. Um, if you want to raise your hand, put a question in the chat, and Cynthia, if I could ask you to monitor that for me, that would be wonderful. And we can just discuss your questions um, as we move along. And then uh, what we're talking about becomes more customized um, and relevant to the group that's gathered here today. So I'm still just pause there for a second in case anybody has asked a question, Cynthia. No, uh, there was just a comment that it's uh, H5P is not com is not compatible with libguides, but it can be hosted on Moodle. Um, I have H5P in my libguides. Oh, show you an example. Okay. So I have created a couple of pieces uh, of H5P. Uh, that I have in my copyright guide. Um, one of them is about images and it is titled, uh, Can I Use This Image? So this is a piece of H5P. We can tell it's H5P because down here in the right hand corner, it has H5P. And over here we have the reuse um, in the embed code. So, uh, campus librarians or anyone else, uh, they don't even have to work at NSCC uh, because it's this is an uh, openly licensed um, piece of H5P. Uh, I have had um, campus librarians uh, contact me and tell me that they um, are using it um, in other places. And how they would do that, there are two ways this content can be reused. We can click on the embed option and when we click on the embed option, it gives us um, an embed code that we can uh, grab. And this is how I have um, embedded, uh, that's how I am displaying uh, this particular piece of H5P here is using the embed code option. Uh, if I was, um, had access to, um, uh, press books to edit H5P, or I was lucky enough to work uh, at a post-secondary um, institution that has an H5P uh, studio option, uh, and that exists in Ontario and in BC. Um, they don't necessarily have to be um, within um, working in a press books book to create H5P. They have um, uh, the H5P, because it's open source, uh, can be taken and uh, used to create H5P Studio. So I don't know of any, any post-secondaries in Atlantic Canada who have implemented that model. Um, but we uh, are lucky enough to have it to work within, um, press, uh, within Pressbooks. So if I wanted to, if I found this somewhere else and went, oh, I really like this, um, I don't just want to embed it, on, and this could be taken uh, in the embed code and put anywhere that you can embed content. So depending on the learning management system you're using, 
Um, you can use it in Brightspace, you can use it in Moodle, you can use it, um, um, I believe it should be compatible with all of them. Um, if you have a website that you're hosting, you could embed it on a website. If we want to import it into um, Pressbooks, we want to reuse the file. Instead of clicking on the embed option, uh, we click the select the reuse file option. Uh, and then we get the option to download an H5P file. So click on the H5P file, the file downloads. And then I need to go back into um, a Pressbooks book to actually um, make use of that file. So going back into, and I have started to um, create uh, the steps here in this using um, H5P book uh, to document um, and put in one place for you uh, how to um, import H5P content, um, how to actify, activate um, H5P, uh, because one of the things um, about H5P in Pressbooks is um, you do have to activate it the first time you use it. It's not very difficult. It just means don't be thrown off by not seeing um, an H5P menu option the first time that you go in. So I am going to go into um, the back end for a minute because it seems like a logical step to take here since I have downloaded this file. Um, whoops. So for those of you who are not um, uh, working in Pressbooks, um, this is the front, obviously the front facing, um, reading the web version of um, the Pressbooks book. And to go into the back end, um, I can click on admin um, up at the top, which will take me into the general editing menu. Um, but because I am already logged in, I can come down um, to a chapter, click on a chapter, and uh, click on the edit button to come into this particular um, chapter and start working. So this is a chapter that I've um, titled NSCC Created um, H5P Content. When H5P uh, is added um, into the editing mode, we don't actually see the interactive content. We can tell that there's H5P here because there's a square bracket with H5P and then the identification number. So um, that is the placeholder and the code for the H5P. Uh, and when we go back up to view chapter, This is where it's going to take a minute because it's a pretty heavy chapter with lots of um, H5P, um, different kinds of content in it. I'm going to go back into the edit mode. So because um, I've already activated H5P in this book, H5P is showing up in the menu on the right hand side almost at the at the bottom. It's the second to last um, option um, at the bottom. If the um, if you go into a book for the um, and you're using H5P for the first time in the book, because it does get activated at the book level, you will have to go to um, plugins on the menu option, select plugins, and then look for H5P. So here's H5P and you can see, I don't need to activate it uh, because it's already activated, but I do have the option of deactivating it. So if you come in here, click activate and then come back, then the menu option is going to be available here for you to select. So when I click on um, all H5P content, this is showing me all H5P content in this particular book. It's not all H5P content in NSCC Pressbooks. It's all H5P content in this specific book. 
and each um, piece of uh, H5P has an ID number. And this is how the, um, the piece of H5P gets added into the book. So it has that square bracket with the H5P identifier and then the ID number. So this ID number, so I can come in here. It's important to name um, your pieces of H5P uh, well, because if you get a lot of content like there is in this book, there's um, three pages of H5P here. If the content is not um, uh, given a uh, informative name, it's going to be um, harder to find, especially if you're coming back to a book after having worked in it, um, say six months or 12 months ago, um, having uh, good naming conventions um, uh, is, is, uh, will really help you out. Uh, so in this back end, we can see the name that's been assigned to it, the AP kind of H5P content type that has been uh, selected to use. Uh, it says author here, but author can mean that you're the person that imported the work, or it means um, you're the person who... Uh, created the work. So I have a mixture in this book of content that I've created and content that I have uh, imported and content I have imported and then uh, revised um, in some way. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to pause for a second, Cynthia, to see if there are any questions since I'm kind of getting into the um, back end, which I don't know, could be a bit confusing if if you've never worked in the back end of Pressbooks before. All right, there's a hand. You want to ask your question? Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks, Lynn. I just have a question about embedding. So you mentioned that you can embed H5P activities into your chapters. Uh, y yes, so um, if you embed, it's the same as if you're embedding, um, um, is it like a YouTube video? Yes, so that's where sort of, so there are two ways of embedding, of, of using the content. If you're using the content within Pressbooks, um, use the, um, I'll just go back to the uh, the chapter we were working on. If you're working within Pressbooks, mm -hmm. I would suggest that you stick with just using um, the uh, the code, so the bracket with H5P and the ID number. Uh, and um, what that is ensuring um, is that you're using the content that is linked to this book. And uh, any changes that you're making um, in here to your H5P are going to be um, reflected in your new content. Uh, when, um, so for instance, this image, because I'm the author and creator of this, of this particular piece of H5P, if somebody takes this piece of H H5P and uses the embed code, let's say you use it and you put it um, on one of your, it's a web page that you manage, it's a it's it's like a YouTube video or any other embedded content. You're not making a copy. And if I make changes to this content, it will be reflected wherever the embed code is being used. Got it. You may or may not want that. Maybe you really like this version and you don't aren't interested in having um, the updated changes. Who knows? Um, but it's important to understand that the difference between is if you said, no, I'm not going to embed this, I'm going to reuse it, and then you import the file right. in your Pressbooks instance, then you're the creator. Then you control when the changes, if any, get made. Got and it. you use the embed code, but okay. you're not controlling as opposed so to controlling. Yeah, no, that sounds good. So when you, so if you are embedding, which is probably what I'll do, um, when you are embedding, when you go to, would you mind going back to that screen that lists all your H5P activities? 
Um, oh, the one in the editing tool? The one, the H5P content, right. Yeah. So when you go into all H5P content, so anything that you embed will be reflected on that page. Yes, anything that I have, any piece of H5P that I have created within this book is going to be listed here. It's not, it's not going to display in the book until um, it's, I choose to insert um, the code. So let's say I want this one. I'm going to click on this piece of H5P. Uh, when I click on it in the back end, I can review it so I can look at it to see, yeah, you know, this is, this looks good. I think I would like to use this. If I decided um, that it was almost perfect, but not quite, and I wanted to revise it in some way, I can do that. I can just click on the edit button. And I would suggest for anybody who's starting off with using H5P, to import to start by importing um, a piece of content you know if you want to create um, a list of multiple choice questions um, start by importing one and looking at how it's been created um, and i think that's that's one method of mm -hmm. learning um, how to use it uh, so in this we can see that it's a um, the question, the content type here is called list of column content. Uh, the instructor in this instance um, contacted me because she wanted to be able to create a list of multiple choice questions in a column. She didn't want them in a slide deck moving um, from on from um she wanted the students to be able to see them in a list. So if we look at this one, we look at view, we can see that using the column creation tool allowed her to achieve um, that goal of having um, more than one multiple choice questions that can all be viewed at the same time um, and that the students and we can um, try this out in the back end to see, you know, if it's functioning properly, uh, select a um, answer, click check uh, to see um, what the uh, options um, are that have been selected for feedback, because all of this is customizable um, within the back end. If I click on um, and this maybe was not the best one um, to choose um, as a first example because it's a bit cluttered because there are multiple um, multiple questions here as opposed to there just being um, one. So we can see here that this is um, called question one, multiple uh, choice. We It could have an image um, to accompany it, but that option has not been used in this instance. The question is all of the whoop, all of the following statements are true except um, when I put my cursor there, it went into edit mode. I could now change this if I wanted to. And these are the available um, options that the student can select uh, in response to the question. You select the box by putting a check mark in for the answer that's correct. And you can put in uh, customized feedback. Um, so this particular uh, instructor chose to just put in check again. Um, there, you can also put in um, text prompts for uh, tips and uh, a message that to display if the answer is not selected. Uh, and there are grading options um, at, at, excuse me, um, at the bottom, and there's a behavioral setting. Uh, the behavioral setting um, uh, in this instance is just uh, whether we want a horizontal um, ruler to be there or not. Um, and the other um, options are you can turn you can turn off the retry button. In this instance, the retry button and show solution buttons are both enabled. 
randomized um, as selected, so can be turned off and turned on. So there are all kinds of different um, customizations available in here beyond just putting in, um, going back up here to view, beyond just putting in uh, a question and different options. There are, um, we can see here that the show solution and retry buttons are turned on, but they can be turned off. We can um, put in um, a different message. We could put in um, an explanation here of why this is the wrong answer. Uh, it's uh, it's really up to the creator to decide, um, which is, I think, one of the amazing um, features uh, of this uh, creation tool is the limit is really only our imagination. It just has endless, endless um, possibilities. Um, did I get, did I get to your your um, just sort of I went on a little bit of a ramble there, but I hope I answered your question. Yes, no, that was very helpful. I'll probably follow up with you if you don't mind. I have some. Uh, I'm trying to import some H5P content into Pressbooks, so I'm just struggling with it a little bit. But um, this was oh, great. Thank you. Super easy. So we were going to, and I am um, uh, creating chapters where I'm planning to. I've got the um, the rough outline here of. Um, steps to follow when you're importing um, the content in. Um, and I will um, be um, updating and maintaining this because it's gonna be a very useful resource to not just um, uh, to, I guess, to this group, uh, but to instructors at the college where I work and potentially to you know anyone who's interested because it is an, an open book that is discoverable. Um, out there in the Pressbooks world. Um, I think before I get into, I am going to show you how to um, import a file because it is incredibly easy. But first I wanna back up for a minute and go to where to find um, existing H5P because using um, existing um, H5P, uh, I, I think it's just a good um, solid strategy instead of sitting down, unless, and, and, um, solid strategy for creating, um, for getting content um, that relates to uh, what you're working on. Um, and unless you've got a, um, a quiz already um, that you're using, uh, maybe, you know, as a, as a physical copy that you want to um, convert to an interactive um, format, um, uh, in most instances, I would say, go out and explore the world of what's available there um, first. So what the first option we're gonna look at. Uh, Lynn, sorry, yeah. I just to, can we just take a quick pause while I stop and start the recording again? Because my computer crashed and I'm not sure if it's actually really okay. recording right now. Sure. So yeah. one moment, it'll just take Let two seconds. Well, give me a second to get the. Okay, it started again. We're good. So one of the places to look for uh, H5P content is the H5P, uh, H5P, the Pressbooks directory. So I'm gonna go to um, the Pressbooks directory. And um, let's say I want a book on, um, I'm looking for, uh, I'm teaching marketing and I want um, to find some H5P connect uh, activities that connect to that. I'm going to come down to the filter option and I'm going to uh, select a minimum of two pieces of H5P. So I'm looking for books that have a minimum of two pieces of interactive content. And I'm selecting uh, search at the top. So it's searching by my keyword. So you can see now it's saying it's 28 results from uh, the keyword of marketing with the active filter of a minimum of two pieces of H5P. So when we find a book um, using, so now we've got books that only have um, some interactive content in them. And we can look at the list of H5P 
in these books by uh, in each of the book records, if you're not familiar with the press books um, book records, um, they um, always display exactly the same, whether it's in your uh, on your press books network or uh, in the press books directory. And underneath the title, when there are activities, we can select the hyperlink and it gives us a list of the pieces of H5P in this book we can see the type of activity, um, so the kind of H5P content director, uh, the type of H5P content that was selected to create the content is here under activity type. Uh, and if we're sort of confused by like, what do they mean by POEM categorization exercise? We can click on show activity and it will let us um, play with and try out that particular piece of H5P that's there. So it's a good way of find, seeing if there's content um, that you're interested in um, using and importing into your work. And this is actually a good um, uh, range of different kinds of H5P uh, content types. There's a, a quite a, um, a range here. So we can, I'm gonna, so this is image um, hotspots. We've got um, accordion. Accordion is just expanding things. It's sort of, it is what it sounds like. So let's say I really like this anatomy of a web page. Um, and I, I'm thinking, I, I, I want to use this. Uh, I will come down here and I'm going to download the file. Now I can see that I have saved the file, anatomy of a web page. I'm going to come back over to this open tab over here where I have my book. And I'm going to go into um, edit. I'm going to come down to the bottom of this um, book. I'm going to say, well, just take that. So, whoop. Could help if I could type. I'm just going to hit save here because I'm going to leave this screen. And if I don't save my text here before I leave the screen, um, that text would be lost. So now I'm in this chapter. I'm going to come over to H5P content on the side. I can either uh, select add new or all H5P content. It doesn't really matter which one I select. I'm going to get um, uh, into the same uh, area for editing. Um, so I am going to say I want to upload. So I'm going to select upload. Now it's saying to me, where's your file? So I'm going to say, um, let's find my file. I need to go to my downloads. Anatomy of a web page. There's the file that I downloaded. It's kind of grayed out in here because I haven't, it's asking me to confirm that I actually want this file. So I'm going to say use. And it's going to whir for a little bit. Tells me it's successfully uploaded. It's not part of my H5P library until I take a very important step and that's to come over to the right hand side and click on create. All right, so it's thinking about it, it's creating it. Um, I kind of whizzed by the little box underneath that had uh, the select, deselect, uh, and that is where um, I was keeping the sharing um, options attached to this uh, piece of H5P. So now I have the piece of H5P um, inside my book. I can come over here and grab this code the H5P ID 45. 
if I want to use it as is, I'm I'm one and done. I can just um, go back to my book chapter and add it in. So I'm going to go back down to the spot where I created a, a spot for it, and I'm going to uh, paste the code in. I'm going to hit save. And now um, in Pressbooks, um, for those of you who are working in Pressbooks, you already know this, but it has a very seamless way of going from um, editing to view. We, got, we go up to the red bar, find the chapter, the view chapter option. I'm going to scroll down to where I place the content. Here's my text holder, new H5P import. And here's the piece of H5P that uh, we just copied the file together, imported it into um, my book that's hosted in NSCC Pressbooks, uh, copied the uh, square bracket H5P code and inserted it into the book. Now it's here living in my book. If I decided um, that I have um, a Brightspace course that I'd like to use this content in, um, this is now my content. Any changes I make are going to be reflected wherever this embed code uh, is used. So I could come here, grab this embed code, uh, and insert it um, into my Brightspace course. And then this exact piece of H5P uh, would also um, be available there for students to use. A uh, quick question, Lynn. Yeah, are uh, the HPID uh, code, the short code that you had, uh, yep. are those specific to that book? Like every book will have a one to whatever? Yes, good question. Okay. Um, so it's specific. So if, so the, um, that uh, code, uh, this particular code, that's not the code um, in the book that I copied it from. That's a unique code that's given inside this particular Pressbooks book um, because I have um, created um, a new copy of it. Uh, we now have a, um, a version that I own that I can change in any way. So it has a unique, a unique code. And it depends how much H5P you have. There's no mystery to how the code gets added. I have 45 pieces, um, different um, pieces of H5P in here. If I create a new one now, the ID will be 46 because then I will now have 46 pieces. The very first one you create will have an ID number of one. And you can sort um, by content type. So in the back end here, I can um, view them by content type. I can view by ID number if I wanted to look at uh, which was the first one that I created. Um, you can search. So obviously, you know, uh, 45 or 46 pieces of H5P is uh, a fairly significant number. So if I wanted to quickly find a piece of H5P, I could um, use um, keywords and then it's only going to show me um, the pieces of H5P, H5P that um, have copyright um, as a keyword in their title. All right, I am going to go back to um, another way to look and find um, existing pieces um, of H5P. So I, I uh, use uh, the Pressbooks um, directory to find H5P um, and have helped um, instructors discover that tool who, you know, a lot of them are just um, now just out there happily searching and finding um, their own content successfully. Um, using um, the Pressbooks um, filter option. Um, eCampus on Ontario, they have a lucky, 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 they have an H5P lab. 
and it's open. It's not um, something that's um, password protected, this website. It's an open website. We can come in here uh, and look at the content that's being created by post-secondary instructors in Ontario. Um, usually as a D it's this, uh, the filter here is showing because I've already been in here um, today, but typically when you come in, um, see Phil, uh, you have to click to uh, make the uh, menu option on the left to display. Uh, we can search for content um, by keyword again. So just sticking with that concept of looking for content connected to marketing. I can um, use a very broad search term. I can come down and um, refine, refine by subject and say, well, um, let's look for content uh, in business and management. Uh, and I'm going to click search. And then it gives me content uh, to scroll through. Uh, we can click on them and look and have a view at uh, whether it's something we're interested or not. And just you just have to use the back button to go back and forth and uh, have a look at um, whether there's content here that um, is of interest to you to either, uh, again, download the file um, to insert uh, in a Pressbooks hosted book and uh, make it your own uh, or use the embed code. If you find um, a book, um, let's say you find a book somewhere uh, maybe you were just, I don't know. Um, sometimes I discovered this very cool, uh, I think it's a cool trick. So if I had, um, if I was looking at a book and I was, I wanted to see, I'm um, going to just go NSCC Press Books Marketing 2E. Uh, so I'm just looking for um, uh, uh, an NSCC published press books book um, on marketing. I'm going to click on this book. When we are finding a press books book this way, it doesn't tell us anywhere. Um, it doesn't, we'd have to go, it, it might tell us that there's H5P somewhere, but it, it doesn't even seem, no, it doesn't even give us that information. But I can come up here um, and at the URL string, I can just insert H5P dash list. You can do this with any Pressbooks hosted um, book. And if it has H5P inside of it, it's going to give us that nice list of um, H5P that uh, was so um, easy to link to in the Pressbooks directory. Uh, we can do it this way too. Just insert H5P list, and then um, I can say, oh, this marketing ethics branching scenario looks really interesting. Um, let's have a look at that. Or this is a question set. Um, this is quite a sophisticated um, piece of H5P using um, branching where depending on what uh, answers the student selects, it branches and uh, takes the student um, down um, a different route. So this is, um, uh, so you can see, depending on what the student picks, they'll go down um, a different route and then you can redo. Uh, that is the same um, tool that I use to create, um, I have an image, can I use it? So it's the branching tool where um, depending on uh, the option that the student selects, it goes down um, a, different, uh, a different route. Um, and there are many, many different um, kinds of um, H5P uh, creation tools. Um, we are, it's not possible to touch on every single one today because 
there are so many of them. So I would suggest um, in starting to use H5P, uh, if I go back into um, the admin section for this book again and back into the H5P editor, so I'm coming back down, I'm finding H5P, I'm going into um, add new. When we're in the, um, the back end, so in this instance, I'm not, I haven't found um, a file to import and work on. And I'm going to reinforce that I do think that that's a really great way to start is by importing and then editing um, something that you find and revising it, customizing it, making it, making it your own. It's a great way to get really comfortable uh, with this kind of um, creation tool. There are um, many different options. Uh, and when we uh, look at them within um, Pressbooks, if we're not sure if we go, well, this, I'm, I think I might be interested in image hotspots, but I'm not sure. Um, you can, um, we can click on it. And right within Pressbooks, we don't have to go out um, to, find the tutorial. It does take us out externally to the H5P site, but we don't have to go looking for it. Uh, it's going to, Pressbooks is going to take us to the tutorial for that piece. Um, no, it's going to, yeah, it takes us to the tutorial. Uh, and it also, I can click on example. And again, it's going to take me out externally to an example, but it's a good way to confirm, is this um, the kind of content that's going to work for my particular needs right now? Um, and there's no having to go dig for it. You know, you can, it's, it's linked out right from within this editing screen here. Um, if you decide um, for you, uh, when you um, go to do this, you will um, be asked to activate the content type first. Uh, the first time you use the content, when we're saying add new, I'm just going to see if I maybe can find. So when it hasn't been used within a book, we uh, have the um, button that says get as opposed to details. So if I said, oh, um, I think I would like to um, try this one, I would say get uh, and ask it to install. And it doesn't take very long and then it, and they're all available. It's just, um, if you haven't used it before, it's not gonna be um, there uh, until you, take those few easy steps and then didn't take very long. And now it's here and ready to be used. So I'm just gonna stop there for uh, a minute and see if there are any questions. Uh, not a question, but in the chat, uh, Kelsey uh, uh, shared a link uh, about documentation outlining the activities and the accessibility friendly. Uh, Yes, okay, which I, ones are accessible, which ones aren't? Yep, and I have that in this little guide that I'm creating too. If you go down to the um, accessibility chapter here, the H5P and Pressbooks, I don't believe in uh, if they update this. Uh, so it's just linking out um, in this uh, resource tool to um, their accessibility statement, you know, and to the uh, accessibility page, because I agree it's important to know which um, pieces of content um, are accessible. Most of them are. Um, the ones that aren't are going to tell you here in no. Um, oh, it's a little bit more no than um, I remember. It's more the, and it's the, the speaking ones um, definitely at this point um, are not um, accessible. Does anybody, is there, um, I, because we're getting close to the end, it might be a good time uh, to ask if there um, is something that I didn't cover that somebody's really wondering about. 
Um, if you'd like to ask that question now, I'll try to answer it because as I said, you know, I'm just further along in this journey of learning, using and supporting instructors at NSCC using H5P. Um, and I'm really in, in, uh, enjoying uh, exploring and figuring out how to use it. It's, it's really fun. So for those of you who are thinking about it and haven't used it yet, you know, I strongly encourage you to just get in there and play. Uh, Kelsey, do you have a question? I saw a hand. Maybe not. Uh, you may need to unmute there, Kelsey. We're not hearing you. Her mic's not working. Oh, oh, okay. You can type it in the chat if you think it, you can explain what you're asking. So uh, uh, Kelsey is asking in the chat uh, whether you uh, have found, are there any particular activities better received by students? And she's curious about engagement. Um, that's an interesting question. I, I think that uh, we have a couple of uh, open textbooks where students who were in the course uh, using the open textbook were then um, hired in the summer uh, to um, create more H5P because they really like the, um, the interactive uh, assessment um, pieces and interactive content. So um, that piece of feedback has definitely been um, uh, there in terms of students being engaged enough to want to uh, contribute um, to the creation of more interactive content. Um, the, uh, th one of the presentations um, I went to about interactivity and H5P um, in press books was given by a psychology professor who also looked at it from um, uh, not just infusing his textbook with H5P, but um, how, uh, because this is his subject area, how that affects um, the brain, retention information, um, and learning. And he referred to it as the doer effect, that when we provide um, the opportunity to apply our learning um, right at the time that we're um, reading and learning, that there increases um, retention and engagement, and they actually have this term called uh, the doer effect. Lynn, uh, was are there um, recordings available for these sessions you had mentioned? Because you've mentioned it a few times. Well, it, it was really one of the best conferences I've I've, I've ever gone to. It was it was amazing. I will I will I will look that up and see if I can find an archive. That's a great, that's a great question. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Lynn? Seeing any right now, but uh, if you have any in the, any further questions that you think of after the fact, uh, we can always, uh, you can either send them to myself or Lynn directly, and uh, I will make sure Lynn gets them or Lynn will answer them for you. Uh, we, once again, we'll be uh, posting the recording uh, as quickly as possible and the link uh, to Lynn's book uh, on the call website and YouTube channel. Um, I just have to uh, merge the two uh, video files together, but you will be notified if, uh, because you uh, registered, you will be notified that when it is, becomes available. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. This is wonderful. I learned several new things we, that I... <laughs> just before we leave, I want to point out this, highlight this one creation type that I just think is amazing uh, because the students can uh, use it right in the web book. Um, enter, uh, you know, your... your uh, 
type in uh, responses, move to the um, enter your answer, move to the next screen, type in responses, and at the end, on the last screen, um, create a, a Microsoft Word document. Um, uh, if I click on create, it includes both the questions, the students' answers, and if we export it, it saves it to um, a Word doc. You can see there that the Word doc is being um, exported. This, I, I just think this is an amazing tool um, to uh, be able to include in open textbooks. Uh, and we've found ways um, to use this in a variety of open textbooks um, at NSCC. I think it's, um, again, um, it's one of those, uh, falls into that category of really the, um, the options for using it are, the only limit is our imagination. Just wanted to highlight Thanks. that because yeah. I think it's such a cool one. It'll be interesting to see if that, that H5P in the future ever interacts with uh, chat beat GPT or something. Um, <laughs> sort of like, it, I'm just curious. I automatically went there when I saw it answering questions that were, an, that were asked. Um, but that's in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lynn. And uh, I am very happy that we were able to join us today. And uh, once again, we will.